everybody. Welcome. Welcome back to another episode of Oops! Wrong Hole. Uh, another late episode. I'm, I'm late again, people. I'm sorry. I'm late again. Only way that's worse to hear is if I were a lady and you were my boyfriend and we lived in a trailer, because now we're going to have to raise a baby on no budget. Let's get real. The cat would have to go. Gonna have to feed the baby the cat, because meat's expensive. Who are we kidding? Then after a little while, most likely we'll start arguing. Expenses are tight. Emotions get high. We're gonna kill each other. One of us is gonna have to go. Now the baby's eating his parents because once again, meat, meat is expensive. expensive. That's right. So now who knows the effects of cannibalism on a little baby brain? I probably just made a murderer. Meanwhile, my life's falling apart. You're dead. It's a nightmare. The point is, it could be worse. It could be worse. No matter what's going on in your life right now, just be happy that you are not in a relationship with someone who's expecting to give birth to your child while you both live in a trailer by a swamp. Just, just be happy about that. It's the little things, people. By the way, I should confess, I'm not late with this episode just because of laziness. Obviously, there was, there was some of that involved, but it's not just because of laziness. I actually bought some new equipment to record some things that I'm excited about doing, but the equipment would also be used for this podcast and so I went out, did the human thing of getting super excited and sacrificing myself to the gods of credit. I came home with my new toys. I set them up. I was psyched. And then I realized I had no idea how to use this thing. And uh, that was around Sunday. <laughs> I was really excited to record the episode. And then I realized, oh, no, I'm a caveman and I need to invent fire right now, which I, I couldn't do at the moment. But fast forward a few days and a lot of me screaming. And here we are. And I figured it out. Now, some of you might be rightfully asking yourselves, why the hell didn't he just go back to the store and get help right away and figure this thing out? And I'll tell you why. It's because I realized I've lost all faith in a section of humanity. That's right. The retail salesman. I've lost all faith that anybody working in a store whose job it is to sell me something is actually going to help me. And this, this holds true even more so at the music shop by my house. That place, it's almost like they get a commission for every time they are not helpful. It's the weirdest thing. It's almost incredible. It's almost incredible. This store feels like it comes out of an episode of The Twilight Zone. Well, son, here we are. Happy birthday. No way. I get to buy a guitar? That's right, kiddo. Just as soon as we get ourselves a little customer service. Hmm. That is odd. What, Dad? Son, have you seen anybody that works here? Uh, yeah, there is. That, that guy. There, in the corner. No, no, that can't be it. That guy, pretty sure he's jerking off behind the guitar amps. He's wearing a uniform, though. Oh, my God. Hey! Hey, you behind the amps! Can I get a little customer service over here? Excuse me! It's like this guy can't even hear me. Maybe that guy's the manager. Hey, sir, there's a guy over there. I'm waiting for some help, and he's not even... Hello? Oh, oh, you can't hear me either? <laughs> okay, okay. Can nobody hear me in this place? Can nobody hear me in this place? Jimmy, let's... Let's get out of here. Jimmy? Jimmy! Son! Oh my god. Oh my god, where am I? What's happening? Am I dead? Am I dead? No! That was supposed to be like the end of the episode where he just screams into the endless void of space, but uh I don't know. It became Tarzan by the end. I don't know what happened there. But the point is, I go to this place and it basically feels that way. It feels like <laughs> there's an endless void around me where good advice and good information cannot reach me. The odds of them helping me are so low. I don't trust any salesman in that music shop to the point where I test them. I ask them the same question in two different ways just to see if they give me two different answers. And of course they do. They do. Because God forbid I go to a store 
and actually get some help from somebody. I'll tell you, this is why the retail industry is going out of business. That's right, I said it. It's because when you walk into a store now, the help you get from the salespeople is equal to the help you get when you wander onto a website on your own. And that is none, nada. You get no help. That's why people are moving to the web. They're like, well, if I'm going to get no help after getting off my ass and going there, I might as well stay on my ass and get no help. At least then I'm comfortable while getting no help. At least then I can eat a burrito while getting no help. I went to Sam Ash the other day and I actually got some customer service. The only problem was I got customer service from a guy who didn't work there. There was just some dude that was sitting at a very important looking computer in one of the rooms that I was walking through. And I asked if he worked there and he turned around and said, I used to. And then he ended up helping me. He answered all my questions. Wonderful dude. Then, then the employee walked in, ignores me completely. It's like if I'm not even there, he just walks in, goes right up to the dude I was talking to, the guy who was explaining all this stuff to me. And they just start chit-chatting because they're friends. Turns out they're friends. The friend who's actually not on duty. (laughs) Helpful. The guy who is working currently at the place. The guy who is clocked in and getting paid to help people choose what to buy. That guy couldn't be less helpful. The only way that guy could have been less helpful is if he was spreading misinformation to me while I was standing there. I see you looking for a monitor. Maybe I can help you. How about these Yamahas? They're made of cheese. But you know what, people? If you're like me, if terrible customer service is slowly just annoying the crap out of you, remember that we can't blame the employees. You can never blame the employees of a store for bad customer service because unless it's a small business owned by them, they didn't hire themselves. It's the manager's fault. It's always the manager's fault. And my mind is consistently blown when I leave the house, go to a store and come across staff members that just, they leave me thinking, how the hell did the manager of this place not realize that you were not going to help me? How in the world was it not obvious to whoever runs this place, that you are not a candidate for being helpful. What the hell? Oh my God. Cause I don't, cause I don't know if you're like me. I've said this before, but I'm a face slash demeanor person. I look at a person's expression. I look at how they carry themselves, a little bit of the personality. I can make a judgment call right then and there. Is it judgmental? Hell yeah, but it has never failed me. Not once so far. My day might come, the day might come, but not yet. So far, bullseye every time. So it leaves you leaves you wondering, how the hell do some of these people get hired? I could tell from a mile away they're not going to be helpful. It's not hard to tell. You can see, you can see, you can see with certain people what they're going to be like when you give them responsibility. Most people that I've worked with that were like blatantly, uh, consistently bad at their job just said it on their face. They said it with their voice. They came into interviews and they're like, all right, so, uh, Tyler, um... What can the company expect from you as an employee? Oh, well, you know, I'm just here to work hard and, you know, get get that money, you know, and just, uh, 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 Tyler, (laughs) look at that. The guy fell asleep. Guess we should hire him, right? I mean, oh, definitely. yeah, Yeah, why not? Seems pretty clear to me. He does have great cheekbones. By God, you sold me. Put this guy on the roster. Can't wait to get this guy behind the customer service desk. He's going to do some damage. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of doing damage, the typhoon of the perverts continues. Harvey Weinstein must feel like young Tarzan in that animated movie. When the, like, you know, gorilla comes up and takes his hand and that Phil Collins song kicks in. I want to know, can you show me? I want to know about these perverts like me. That's right. And a lot of celebrities, a lot of famous people, politicians. George Bush Sr. likes to sneak in a good butt grab every now and again. Kevin Spacey. Jesus, what to say about Kevin Spacey. Justin Hoffman. Dusty. Dusty, what happened, baby? I don't... I would have never guessed, never guessed Dustin Hoffman. For some reason, in my mind, he was, he was, he's the guy from Meet the Fockers. Like, that personality is what I thought... He had. I know he's an actor, people, okay? I just thought out of all the characters he's acted as, I bet that one, the charming, nice, warm one, is his real personality. I bet that's the real Dustin Hoffman. 
And uh, who knows, maybe, maybe now that's the real Dustin Hoffman, but apparently there was a time when he liked to order special things that were not on the menu. Michael Jackson style. Apparently, production assistants would walk up to his room and ask, Mr. Hoffman, what would you like for breakfast? And he would turn and say, two tits and a vag sunny side up. That's not what he said, but that's the gist of it. Man, I'm disappointed with that one. They're all like bad, horrifying situations, but I'm disappointed in the Dustin Hoffman one. Oh man, and that latest story that came out today, which is not, it hasn't been proven by any stretch, but there's been a few accusations that Charlie Sheen banged a 13-year-old dude, actor Corey Haim. That's what the, that's what the story is. I don't want to assume that it's true, but with all the stories that have been coming out and how many people have not been denying that behavior, it's getting harder to doubt these stories. Getting harder to doubt. Now when I heard that, I was just like, oh, man, come on, Charlie. I thought you were down with tiger blood, not tiger beats. What are you doing? Jesus, if that one's true, who's next and what's next? I don't want to go online. I'm worried the stories are going to get worse and worse and crazier and crazier until I turn on the news and it just says, new report suggests Tom Hanks has been eating babies. I'm sorry, there's, there's an update to this story. Yep, confirmed Tom Hanks has been eating lots of babies. Oh, God. But as of now, the most widely spreading and convoluted, detailed, uh, lengthy story slash situation goes to Kevin Spacey. Yeah, he's got the championship belt on this one. At the moment. Yeah, guy's a connoisseur of getting touchy. He's an expert. And if he were a boxer... The announcer could introduce him with Making his way to the ring, standing at 5'10", 220 pounds, Kevin violating your personal Spacey! Richard Dreyfuss' his son has come out saying that Spacey grabbed his junk in front of his dad. That's not only pervy, that's pervy and suicidal. Who would- what? What? That's like murdering somebody in front of the police station. He wanted to get caught. He was hoping Richard Dreyfuss would just beat the crap out of him. Maybe he likes that too. Uh, hit me harder, Richard. Uh. Spacey, spacey, spacey. He's grabbing everything in sight. Grabbing all the jewels. There are chipmunks out there going, man, that guy loves nuts. Oh, and that's all we got for today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to another episode of Oops, Wrong Hole. I'm Ramsey's Ravicast. Feel free to follow me on all the social medias. Gots the Twitter, gots the Facebook, Tumblr. I don't know if anybody's still on that besides me and like 13 grandmothers, but hey, if you are, I'm on there too. You name it, I'm probably on it. Feel free to join me there. Until next time, hasta la bye-bye.